Welcome to SteelCon 2019. It's our uh, sixth year, and we're still going and growing. Um, people still seem to be enjoying it, which is good. So, first, the, the sort of the boring official bits. There are no um, fire drills planned for today. If you do hear a continuous alarm, get out of the building. There are plenty of fire exits all over the place. And uh, we'll sort it out if we have to. Spoons. Spoons are your badges. For those who haven't worked it out yet, in your bags, you have a lanyard, and you have a hair grip, and you have a spoon. Dangle spoon from lanyard with hair grip. If you can think of any other ways to mount it, feel free. But as long as we can see the spoons for your, uh, for your badge. You're going to need your badges to get into the de various tracks, and you're going to need it for the party tonight. So if you go back to your hotels after the, um, after the con and before the party, make sure you bring your badge back with you, otherwise you won't be allowed in. Oh. Goodie bags. This year is the biggest by volume goodie bag thing we've had yet. Uh, I think it was about four of, four big car loads to get all the stuff here. A lot of stuff. Uh, just to sort of give you a quick run through of what you've got, you've obviously got the nice branded towels. The jelly babies, all sorts, and wine gums, I think they are. They're... <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, the Bassett's factory is in Sheffield, just up in Hillsborough, so they're all made locally. Same, Henderson's Relish, it's been made in Sheffield since 1885, it's a local delicacy. If you don't know about it, it's similar to Worcester sauce, but better. And... <laughs> It, it's at least vegetarian, it might even be vegan, I'm not sure, but it, it's good. Uh, Gluten-free and approved by vegetarians and vegan, so hopefully it'll do for everybody. Most of you will have a tea bag, thanks to Scott's story, wherever he is, he decided to represent Yorkshire in the tea bags. For anybody from the other side of the Pennines, we do have some Lancashire tea, in case you want to rebel. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? We've got a nice simple key ring, you can all work out what to do with that. We've given everybody a Bitcoin this year, we've splashed out. Everybody's got one Bitcoin, you're all now millionaires. And you're now all penniless. Uh, on the back there is some crypto, if you can solve it, well done, you've won a prize. I've no idea what it means, but if you can solve it, come and tell me. Uh, what else have we got in here? Last little bit, you've got these little triangles. These were picked up off Alibaba or one of the big Chinese sites. They are GPS-ish, Bluetooth kind of tracker things. The idea is, you've got an app on your phone, you pair Bluetooth to this, whenever they go out of connection, it, the phone remembers where it last saw the tag and it can tell you where you lost your bag or whatever. I figured for about 50p a piece, there can't be any security in these. Hack them. <laughs> Hack them and see what you can do. I assume they're turned on by default, because I don't think there are any buttons or anything on them, so... Yeah. See, see how many people in this room you can track. Oh, they, they click if you squeeze them. That might be turning them on. I don't know. And the last but most important thing in your goodie bags is Woody's Wonder Cube. You will wonder where your life has gone. The cubes you have got in your bag are not solved yet. They may look like they're in the right colours, they might look like they're in the right orientations. That doesn't mean anything. They are not solved. Well, that's the basic version. If you want to solve just by colours, go for it. If you want to do the slightly harder version, turn to page... Uh, where is it? Turn to page 20 in your books. You've got a crossword. Solve the crossword. Decode the cube. Solve the cube to match the crossword. Simple. The solved cube does not look anything like you would expect. You can't do it by orientation. You can't do it by colour. 
You can't really do it by anything apart from the crossword. And as far as I know, this is the only solved one in the world at the moment. So if you want to check whether you've solved yours, uh, come and find me and we can compare them. Um, yeah, so have a play. I, I reckon we will have at least one solved by lunchtime. So there, there's the challenge. See if anybody can do it. It took me with the kind of the cheat sheets, good hour, hour and a half to get it done. So, yeah, see what we can do. Right, other stuff we've got on. We've got a quiet room this year. For people who get a bit stressed out by all the noise, all of the busyness, size and everything, we've been asked to put on a nice quiet room. We haven't decided where that is yet, just because of people running around and sort of stuff this morning. Um, Lizzie, Lizzie, where, Lizzie's over there. Lizzie's going to be running it for us. Unfortunately, she is also speaking at 10 o'clock in the first track. Uh, the first talk set, slot. So when Lizzie has finished, we're going to sort out where the, the quiet room is, we're going to set it up, and by half ten or something it should be open. We've got a couple of options, just want to make sure you get the best room for it. Um, yeah, Lizzie will be in there all day, most of the day, just chilling out and uh, give you a Yeah, sleeping in the corner. It's just a place to get away from everything if you need it. If you do have any problems through the day, Come and find us. Ask one of the crew. You got me, Mike, and Neil round. Uh, Neil's probably still sort of running around trying to sort out streaming and stuff. Uh, but go find one of us or one of the other crew, and we can sort any problems out. We've got a Commodore 64 arcade. Steve, have you come in? Steve, oh, somebody waved at the back. Um, it's right at the back of the uh, atrium area on your right. He's got a load of retro games for you to go and play on. Get out there and, uh, and have a go. Relive your childhoods for some of you. Some of you, see what we used to get to play on. We've got the car hacking area. Uh, atrium, first door on your left. It's uh, Ian's got a brilliant setup in there. It's most of a dashboard of a car, plus all sorts of other stuff for you to hack on. Putting a few talks on there as well. You've got Ian doing one. Uh, Gaz, Scott. Uh, it's going to be open most of the day for you, but it is being closed for an hour, two till three, for the kids' track getting in there. So the kids are going to get to, uh, get to go in and break cars for a bit. All right, sponsors. We couldn't put this event on without our sponsors. We, when we first set this con up, we wanted it to be a free event. We wanted everybody to get in for free. So we did all the budgeting stuff on the con running by sponsors. Obviously, we do charge for bags, but all the bag money goes back in to get you the goodies. The sponsors pay for the whole event. They pay for the venues, they pay for the uh, food that you're getting, they pay for the party, they're paying for the what you get here today. Most of them have got booths out there. Please go see them. Please go talk to them. If they're all quiet, they don't think they get value for money, they don't come back again. So go chat to them. Um, give them your business. At least talk to them. A lot of them are recruiting as well, so if you're looking for jobs or just thinking of moving on, have a chat. We've also got a recruitment company in, so again, if, you, if you're looking to move, have a chat. We've got community sponsors as well. Um, I said this on Twitter a while ago. In a lot of other industries, we would be competing against the B-sides, the 44 cons, all the other events. But in this industry, they're our friends. Um, so we just pair up with them. But we support all of these, these support us. Go to, come to our con, but go to theirs as well. They've all got something slightly different to offer. Um, some are up north, some are down south, some are east, some are west. Get to your local ones and uh, give them some support as well. And just a special quick mention for Hallam Uni, because they've put on the, they give us the building and stuff. They've run a, um, they've got a cybersecurity course, MSC and BSC, and they've recently got I'm not, it's not NCIS, but it's GCHQ accredited, so their course is one of just a few in the country that's properly accredited. Plan for the day. I'm doing the opening now, finish off about 10 o'clock. We've got lunch through to uh, 1 till 2. That's a, a full lunch out there, all sorts of different food. Uh, mixed meat and veggie. We've got a handful of vegan meals put aside, so if you need one of those, have a chat with the catering crew, and um, and they will sort you out with it. 
Okay, if you've got any special dietary requirements or whatever, have a chat with them. They'll tell you all the um, uh, allergens and that kind of stuff. They can sort it out. We've got an afternoon break, 4 to 4.15. We'll be putting on at least tea and coffee and uh, usually end up keeping whatever's left over from lunch as well. So a few sandwiches left. Last year, I think there was very little left. We scavenged everything at lunchtime. Locations. You are now in track one, which is Pennine. Um, track two is where you came in upstairs. If you go up to the top of the stairs or you come out to the lifts, head towards the main door, turn left, and just kind of double back on yourself. There are signs up there. Once you see a few people going up, just follow them around. Track three. Out into the atrium, straight to the far end. There's, uh, again, there's signs on it, but you go slightly off to your right, down a little corridor, and, and track three is hidden in there. Kids, uh, Tanya's going to come up in uh, a few minutes and just tell you where she wants to take you. But for, uh, just for any parents, most of the kids' track will be done just outside here in the computer rooms and up on the fourth floor as well. There's uh, a couple of classrooms up there. I have covered everything. Yeah, we've, oh, and, um, oh, we've got the sticker stall, which is, I think most of you have found by now. What? Registration, yeah. If you haven't registered, then, go for it. Uh, right. Charity for this year is going to be Birmingham St. Mary's Hospice. For those who, um, those who don't know Mike Kemp, we, um, he was a very active member of the community and we lost him earlier this year. Um, he spent his last few days in, um, in St. Mary's Hospice and asked that that's where his, uh, that's where the charity money went this year. So all the proceeds this year are going to be going to the hospice to hopefully help all the people like Mike in their, uh, in their last few days. Um, yeah, we we sort of thinking about Mike, but Mike's big thing was go forth and cause chaos. So don't be miserable about him. Just go and have fun. That's what he wants. Right, to raise money for the charities, we've got to bring in buy stall. That's going to be set up after the uh, the stickers have well not finished, but died down a little bit. It's going to be around the sticker area somewhere down that way. If you brought anything along for it. Drop it off at the crew room or drop it off by the stickers. We'll, we'll take it off your hands. We've got everything from books. We've got some random old bits of hardware. No guarantees on it, no warranties on it. Pay a fair price and take it away. Uh, anything that's left at the end, we will get rid of in some way and try and do it responsibly. We've got the sticker emporium again. Uh, yeah, I think so. most of you have found it already this year. We've got three full tables that are stacked high in stickers. Big thank you to everybody who sent stuff in and who's nagged companies, nagged their friends, all that kind of stuff. We've got so many stickers this year. And what I'd like to do at the end of today is um, anything that's left over, we're going to bundle up and talk to whichever con's coming next and see if any of the other con's want to take the six soul on the, on the road. So we'll pass it on and try and sort of keep it going. Because it's a great way to raise money for, uh, for charity, and everybody likes stickers. Spare goodie bags, we always end up having some stuff left. We end up in the, the odd position where, due to price breaks, we only need 450 of things, but we end up having to buy 500, because it's cheaper to buy 500 than 450. <coughs> so we'll probably have stuff left. Anything that is left, we'll be selling off for afternoon break. Um, probably sticker stall or registration desk again, you'll find it. Next up, scavenger hunt. Come here. Hey. <laughs> you whisper, whisper into here. Okay. So tell them about the scavenger hunt. Go on. So scavenger hunt. For, this is for the kids. Adults can try it as well. You've got the website for it, but only kids can get the prizes. We've come up with a load of challenges. Yeah. Some of them are acquire things, some of them are knowledge that you can find online, and some of them you've got to find people ask questions. Yeah? Okay, so uh, the questions are going to be asked of speakers or um, friends of the con. 
people that uh, people that we know. You know what time? What time we're going to finish it? When the kids track finishes. So about five five thirty. When the kids track's winding up, we'll collect them all in. Where are we giving them to? Mum. <laughs> <laughs> So Jenny's up there, she'll be collecting them from kids. Um, if you're not sure, give them to Tanya or Pippo and she'll take them off your hands. And um, yeah, we'll work through, whoever gets the most points wins a prize. And um, if there's multiple prize, uh, multiple winners, then we'll just draw it out of the hat. Okay, so you, kids, you'll get one of these when you're up in the kids' room and it's online for adults if you want to play along. Okay, right, shoot. Party this evening. Doors will open about 6.45. It depends how long closing takes. Um, you, get, you can go straight across in there. It should be open. Food's coming on for about 7 o'clock. I've no idea what we've got on this year. Uh, the lady who runs the food says she doesn't do grey, she doesn't do beige, she doesn't do boring. But she only works out what she's doing about a week before. So you will have good food. Mixture of hot and cold. It's buffet style, just walk up and grab things. You don't need to form big queues. There's plenty of tables, it's all repeated all over the place. Just go up and get stuff. And if you're queuing, people will walk past you and get things. So just, just go and eat. Yeah. The Northern ice cream. Um, may, not at the party. So, some might appear. For those who missed it, Northern ice cream was invented yesterday. We had two versions. We had the meaty and the vegetarian. The meaty was um, vanilla ice cream with pork scratchings and apple sauce. <laughs> Nicer than you think. Um, kind of like salted caramel with a bit of a tangy twist. And uh, the vegetarian option was mushy peas. It's been northern. I think the mushy peas worked. Other people say not. Uh, yeah, so does food. Quiz. Be a farmers. Will be a farmers in? At least one or two of you. Yeah, a couple at the back. There really is a quiz from about 8 o'clock. All the evening times are about approximate. See what's happening. Um, yeah, so we've got a quiz. We've got PowerPoint karaoke again set up by Carl. Prepare to be shocked, horrified, whatever. If you saw it last year, you'll know what you're letting yourself in for. It's not singing karaoke. It's presenting. Uh, that's about 9 o'clock. And we've got dual core back again from about 10. Uh, you do need your badges to get in. We will be checking them on the door. Kids are allowed in. Uh, obviously, no alcohol. And it's a bar. It's got kind of adult content in it. The quiz and stuff is off slightly in its own room, but it's still accessible. So you make your choice as to whether to bring kids in or not. Kids last year and the year before have been in. They've been fine. Party venue, same as every year. It's in the hubs. Out the main door, turn left, turn right, it's the big silly looking building that looks like that. Used to be the centre for popular music if any of you are here as a student. Uh, we're giving out beer tokens again this year. So we do have a free bar, it's sponsored by Netitude. Uh, we've got a very big bar tab, but we've also got a lot of, a very lot of big, uh, I won't say big drinkers, but pe people who like to, uh, to refresh themselves. So rather than just open the bar, we're giving out beer tokens. We'll give out those later on uh, in the bar area. Uh, depending on what you get, you can get soft drinks and stuff. You'll all start off with the same number. If the bar tab's going well, we'll hand out a few more. If we're running low, uh, we won't. But we usually end up getting most of the way through until 2 a.m. when it all finishes. So you know, if you're out of tokens, the bar's taking cash. So a big thank you to Netsuit for sponsoring that. Saturday, uh, Sunday morning, we've got the Mike Kemp Pew Pew Fest. Um, I said Mike was big in the community. He sponsored Pew Pew Fest, Les Quest, from first year. All the other sponsors, it's invoices and bank transfers and 30 days notice and all this stuff, standard business. Mike said he was going to sponsor it. He asked how much. I told him. But right, okay. Turned up on the day, had me a brown envelope with cash in it. He said, do you want a receipt? He went, no, that's it. There you go. So that, that was kind of Mike's character. He's been supporting it since day one, and so it's now been renamed the Mike Kemp Pew Pew Fest. Two games, 
Unfortunately, somebody sneaked in before us. We normally have about 10, 10.30 start, but somebody sneaked in before us with a birthday party. So we couldn't really kick them out. So we started at half nine. Uh, two roughly half hour games. <coughs> we should be finished by about half ten. Um, sign up sheets are on registration. There's about 28 slots, I think it is. They are going quick. So if you want to get on it tomorrow morning, get signed up. The address, that's the address. If you Google Laser Quest Sheffield, you will get one out at Centertainment that is miles away. It is not that one. This is Centre Town onto Arundel Gate, just tootled down to the end of it by Scott's, was it Holiday Inn Park, uh, that you stayed in last year? Premier Inn. There we go. It's, it's a, something in. Down that end of town. Right, I'm going to have to rush through this very quickly because I've got a few things to do. Um, after that, we're going for brunch at Commune, which is um, a load of local businesses and food stalls and things. You get all sorts of different food. So if you don't want to do the Laser Quest but you want to come along for brunch, feel free. And that's not a Steel Cold sponsor thing. It's just anybody can turn up. So bring your mates, bring your family, bring whoever. Right, now for the fun bits. I wish I hadn't said that. Where's Cooper? I really hope he hasn't run off. He's coming through the door. Come on, come on, come on down. So, for those who don't know, we do this each year. People say silly things on Twitter, I make them regret it. The only clothes that you haven't had. <laughs> nice. Branded. We hope they fit. Sam, Sam, come here, come here. Also, while I was making them up, I made another special pair. Sam Sanoop, where are you? Where is he? Come on, where is he? He's hiding. Don't hide. Come on, he's got to be up there somewhere. Where? Go take them. Find, find Sam. Go hand them to him. Go on. <laughs> I, I'll let him open these because it might scare small children if he opens them in public. <laughs> Sam, wait, come back. Mike will want to see those. Sam, come back. Come back. My runner. Right. The other one, Glenn, where are you? Glenn has done a really good job this year setting up the sticker stand and bringing stuff in. So, where is he? Eh? What's that sound? Ah. Well, we've got Glenn, a very special present, and if anybody saw those tweets, and you know what's in the fuzzed off bit, you'll know what's in this envelope. So, he will be getting these later. And, uh, again, we'll keep it hidden, because it might scare small children. Ah, <laughs> uh, what was the other bit? Yeah. And if you, uh... <laughs> Yes, we have done a lot of consideration about branding, especially when you see these and the pants. <laughs> and the last one, Shannon. How, is, is Shannon still at the back, or is he run off as well? Ah, why has everybody disappeared? Stick your head out and see if Shannon's back there somewhere. While we track down Shannon, have fun today. Um, any problems, give us a shout. Grab people in yellow t-shirts. Uh, just get out there and enjoy things. And, ah, oh, come on, Shannon, come back. Uh, oh, sorry, oh, yeah. Oh, you Shannon. Um, the kids track, if you have any... Oh, good Lord, don't stick that. <laughs> don't stick that in my face. No, please don't stick that in my face. Um, if you have kids for the kids track, we'll be uh, registering them all if we take them with us after this talk and uh, we need you to sign a consent form because we're using high voltage electricity so it's really <laughs> really really important that you come along with your child and don't just deposit them otherwise we will release them to the atrium <laughs> and we'll give them coffee and sugar and I'll let you say come on <coughs> Shannon you're back how much do we need to raise for you to have a single wax. <laughs> and if, if you pick a good number, 
I'll do a strip and you do a strip. <laughs> of wax. Strip. Yes, strip. <laughs> You choose. <laughs> how, how much? Hello. <laughs> ah, we, we've got to make it worthwhile. How much? Five hundred. We get five hundred on a. We'll set up a just giving page. We get five hundred quid on it by closing. I will somehow acquire a waxing kit, and. <laughs> So what? <laughs> we get them in Tesco. <laughs> we, we will somehow require a uh, waxing kit. It, it will be done here. <laughs> it's 10 o'clock, that's it, have fun. First speaker, come on down.